Let's talk about inspecting sloped roof coverings. You want to check the roof covering because any roof can leak. To monitor a roof that is inaccessible or that cannot be walked on safely, binoculars can be used. Look for deteriorating or a loosening of flashing, signs of damage to the roof covering, and debris that can clog valleys and the gutters. Carefully watch the exterior walls and trim for deterioration developing beneath the eaves of pitched roofs that have no overhang or gutters. Roofs are designed to be water resistant. Roofs are not designed to be waterproof. Eventually, the roof system will leak, and no one can predict when, where, or how a roof will leak. Wind and hail damage. Wind and hail can cause significant damage to your asphalt shingle roof. After a storm, a homeowner should hire a reputable roofing contractor or certified home inspector to evaluate the condition of their shingle roof. There's no need for a homeowner to risk their life doing something that an experienced professional does every day. Hail and wind damage may likely be covered by a homeowner's insurance policy. Thermography. An infrared camera can be used to detect areas of moisture at roof structures. And once located, these areas can be more thoroughly checked with a moisture meter device. Such evaluations must be performed by an inspector who is trained in infrared technology and building science. There are four general categories of pitched roof covering materials and their conditions should be monitored as follows. For asphalt shingles, asphalt or composition shingles have a service life from 15 to 40 years, depending on the shingle quality, the installation, the maintenance. When they begin to lose their granular covering and start to curl, the shingles should be replaced. No more than two layers of asphalt shingles should be in place at any one time. If a second layer of asphalt shingles has been applied, check to see if all the flashing materials of the first layer were removed and replaced with new flashing at the second layer. The roof slope. The slope, sometimes called improper, by mistake pitch, the slope of a roof is expressed as a ratio of the rise, vertical distance, over the run, the horizontal distance. The run is usually expressed as 12, and a typical slope might be 4 in 12 or 6 in 12. A slope of 4 in 12 or steeper is referred to as normal. A slope of between 3 in 12 and 4 in 12 can be referred to as low. A 45 degree slope of a roof would have a pitch of 12 and 12. Typically, asphalt shingle roofs should not have a slope of less than 4 and 12. Underlayment. There should be underlayment installed. It should be at least a single layer of 15 pound asphalt saturated felt. Low slope roofs should have at least two such felt layers. If ice damming flashing at overhanging eaves is needed or present, there should be additional measures taken and particular underlayment applied. The number of underlayment layers and the installation of underlayment are difficult to observe during a home inspection and would only need to be investigated if water intrusion occurs. Another common roof covering material is wood shingle and shake. This type of covering has a normal life expectancy of 20 to 30 years in climates that are not excessively hot or humid. Durability varies according to wood species, thickness, the slope of the roof, and whether the shingles are made of heartwood. Maintenance may include periodically treating the shingles with preservative. Shakes are hand split on at least one face and either tapered or straight. Shingles are sawn and tapered. They should not be walked on. These materials can easily break. The minimum slope for wood shingles is 3 and 12 and the minimum slope for shakes is 4 and 12. As wood shingles and shakes age, they dry, crack and curl. In damp locations, they rot. When more than one third show signs of de deterioration, the homeowner should consider replacing them. Another common roof covering material is metal, metal roofing. Metal can last 50 years or more if properly painted or otherwise maintained. Metal roofs may be of galvanized iron or steel, aluminum, copper or lead, and each material has its own unique wearing characteristics. Check metal roofs for the development of rusting or pitting, corrosion due to galvanic re reaction, 
and loose or open or leaking seams or joints. The types of metal, seams, and slope determine the construction details. And there are three basic seam types, batten, standing, and flat. There are also flat and formed metal panels. The slope of metal roofing can be from as low as one half inch per foot, one to 24, to very steep. Snow guards on roofs with steeper slopes should be installed. In locations with heavy, long lasting snow, bracket and pipe snow guards may also be necessary. Low sloped metal roofs that are coated with tar like material are probably patched or have pinholes and cannot be counted on to be water resistant. The fourth common type of roof covering material is slate, clay tile, or asbestos cement shingles. These roof coverings are extremely durable and if of high quality and properly maintained, may last the life of the entire structure. The minimum slope for roofs of these materials is a four and 12. Slate shingles should be secured by copper nails, except in the very driest of climates. Nail heads should be covered with sealant. Nails for tile roofs should be non-corroding. All these roof coverings are brittle materials, are easily broken, and should not be walked on. Use binoculars to look for missing, broken, or slipping pieces. Slate is particularly susceptible to breakage by ice or ice dams in the winter. You should have snow guards on steeper slopes, and in locations with heavy, long-lasting snow, snow guards may also be necessary. Moss will sometimes grow on asbestos cement shingles, but it can be removed with a cleaner to prevent capillary water leaks. Slate, clay tile, and asbestos shingles should be repaired or replaced by a qualified roofer. Let's talk a little about low slope roof coverings. A roof that is nearly level or slightly pitched is called a low slope roof. No roof should be actually level and flat. All roofs must have at least a, a slight slope to properly drain. Low slope roofs can be expensive to repair, so care should be taken in their maintenance. And InterNACHI believes that every home should be inspected every year. Hiring a certified professional inspector should be part of a homeowner's routine home maintenance plan. Regular maintenance and periodic inspections for low slope roofs are necessary. Problems with low slope roofs are common and more difficult to diagnose than pitched roof problems because the path of water leakage through flat roofs is often quite hard to trace. You have to look for signs of ponding water or puddle formation on the surface due to either improper drainage or sagging of the roof deck. If the cause is a sagging deck, it should be structurally corrected. Look at the flashing and the joints all around the roof penetrations, including the drains, soil stacks, chimneys, skylights, hatchways, antenna mountings, and other roof mounted elements. Inspect to see if metal flashing needs painting or re-anchoring, if the asphalt or rubber flashings are brittle and cracked. Parapet wall caps and flashing may develop damage due to wall movement and moisture. There are four categories, essentially, of low slope roof covering materials and they should be monitored. Built up roofing, BUR. Built up roofs are composed of several layers of roofing felt that is lapped, cemented together with bituminous material and protected by a thin layer of gravel or crushed stone. Built up roofs vary greatly in lifespan, but those used in residential buildings usually last about 20 years, depending on their quality, exposure, number of plies, and the adequacy of the drainage. Because built-up roofs are composed of several layers, they can hold moisture in the form of water or water vapor between the layers. Moisture not only accelerates deterioration, it can also leak into a building. Regular maintenance and periodic inspections are necessary. To look for cracking, blistering, alligatoring, and wrinkling, all of which may indicate the need for roof replacement or repair. Homeowners should consult an experienced roofer or their local neighborhood home inspector for further evaluation if they have doubt about the roof's apparent condition. Single ply membrane roofing. A single ply membrane roof consists of plastic, modified bitumen, and synthetic rubber sheeting that is laid over the roof deck usually in a single ply and often with a top coating to protect it from ultraviolet light de degradation. Single ply roofs are installed in three basic ways, fully adhered, mechanically attached, and loose laid 
with ballast. If properly installed and maintained, a single ply roof should last 20 years. Roof penetrations and seams are the most vulnerable parts of a single ply membrane roofing and should be carefully monitored. The material is also susceptible to ultraviolet light deterioration. A protective coating can be applied, but will need to be reapplied periodically. Check carefully for surface degradation on an unprotected roof and fading of the coating on a protected roof. Check also for signs of water ponding and poor drainage. Roll roofing. Roll roofing should be inspected before and after the winter season. Roll roofing consists of an asphalt saturated granular covered roofing felt that is laid over the roof deck. Inspect roll roofing for cracking, blistering, surface erosion, and torn sections. Seams are the most vulnerable part of a roll roofing and should be carefully checked for signs of separation and lifting. Also, check for signs of water ponding and poor drainage. In seismic zones, check the bracing of masonry, parapets, and gables, and consider consulting a structural engineer to determine the need for additional brace bracing or strengthening. Skylights. A leaking skylight is a common experience. From outside, check the glazing for cracks or breaks, loosening of the flashing, and rusting or decaying of frames. Skylights should be checked from the interior too, and don't be surprised if the skylight has a leak. Gutters and downspouts. All gutters need to be kept clean. They should be sloped uniformly without sags to downspouts. Gutter and downspout materials are usually galvanized steel, aluminum, copper, or plastic. Houses with pitched roofs can have a variety of drainage systems. With a sufficient overhang, water can drain directly to the ground without being collected at the roof edge. Drainage of low slope roofs is accomplished in one of three ways. Without gutters or downspouts, with gutters and downspouts, or by downspouts that go down through a building's interior. Drainage without gutters and downspouts can damage the exterior wall with overflow. If the roof has no gutters and downspouts or interior downspouts, carefully check the exterior walls for signs of water damage. Most functional gutters have a minimum ratio of gutter depth to width of three to four. The front edge is typically a half inch lower than the back edge. Four inches is considered the minimum width, except on the roofs of canopies and small porches. If there is a screen or similar device to prevent anything but water from flowing into the gutter, its performance during a rainstorm should be checked to be sure water can actually enter the gutter. Check gutters without screens or similar devices to be sure that basket strainers are installed at each downspout. Cleaning the gutters is a fun homeowner maintenance job but it could be dangerous. Anytime you use a ladder and leave the ground, that is dangerous. Joints at the gutters should be soldered or sealed with mastic, otherwise they'll leak. The steeper the roof pitch, the lower the gutters should be placed or positioned. On roofs with lower slopes, gutters should be placed close to the roof surface. Hangers should be placed no more than three feet apart where ice and snow are long lasting, hangers should be placed no more than 18 inches apart. The strength of a gutter's fastening to the roof fascia or building exterior should be strong and secure. Rusted fasteners and missing hangers need to be replaced. Ice dams. Ice dams can form on pitched roof overhangs in cold climates subject to prolonged periods of freezing weather especially those climates with a daily average January temperature of 30 degrees Fahrenheit or less. Heat loss through the roof and heat from the sun, even in freezing temperatures, can cause snow on a roof to melt. And as the water runs down the roof onto the overhang, it then freezes and forms an ice dam just above the gutter. The ice dam then traps water from melting snow and forces it back under the shingles and into the building's interior. So watch the edge of the roof overhang for evidence of ice dams and look at the eaves and soffit for evidence of deterioration and water damage. If the house has an attic, the underside of the roof deck at the exterior walls should be checked for signs of water intrusion. Downspouts. The very general rule of thumb for downspouts is at least one downspout for every 40 linear feet of gutter. 
for roofs with gutters, make sure that the downspouts discharge so water drains away from the foundation. Downspouts can be checked for size. Seven square inches is generally the minimum, except for small roofs or canopies. There should be attachments or straps at the bottom, the top, and at each joint. Downspout fasteners can rust, deform, fail, or become loose. On houses with multiple roofs, one roof sometimes drains onto another roof. Where that happens, water should not discharge directly onto the roofing material. The best practice is to direct water from higher gutters to discharge into lower gutters through downspout pipes. Occasionally, wooden gutters and downspouts are used, usually on older and historic homes. They may be built into roof eaves and concealed by roof fascias. Wooden gutters are especially susceptible to rot. Pitched roofs in older buildings may end at a parapet wall with a built-in gutter integrated with the roof flashing. At this complicated location, drainage is accomplished by a scupper, which is a metal-lined opening through the parapet wall that discharges into a leader headbox that, in turn, discharges into a downspout. The leader headbox should have a strainer. Check the scupper for deterioration in open seams. All metal roof flashings, scuppers, leader headboxes, and downspouts should be made of similar metals to prevent galvanic corrosion. According to the standards of practice, the inspector will inspect the roof covering from the ground or eaves, vents, flashing, skylights, chimney, and other roof penetrations. The inspector is not required to walk upon any roof surface, perform a water test, or warrant the roof. Skylights are notorious for developing leaks. Prediction of when, how, or where a roof leak will develop is beyond the scope of a visual home inspection.